Okay, you can have a seat. All right, cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Depp, I'd like to start with the, the honeymoon that you and Ms. Hurd took in uh, late July 2015. Certainly. You testify that you, you took a train ride from Bangkok to Singapore, is that right? That's correct. And you claim that on this train ride that Ms. Hurd um, hit you in the face, correct? Uh, yes. And left a black eye, correct? Yes. And Michelle, could you please pull up PX 162? Is that already in evidence? Yes, Your okay. Honor. You published the jury? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Depp, this is the picture that your counsel showed you both in um, your prior, or, or showed you this morning, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And that mark under your left eye is what you claim to be a black eye caused by Ms. Hurd, correct? Um, seems to be there's some scratches around my nose as well. Okay. All right. But that it's your, your left eye, the one close to the chef. That's, that's what your, you says your, your black eye, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and that was the picture your team chose to show you, right? Let's pull so up exhibit 1905, show, show Michelle, please. I'm sorry, which number was it? This is a new exhibit, Your Honor, 1905. And that's defendants? Defendants exhibit 1905. Okay, thank you. Ask for permission to publish, Your Honor. Oh, you want to put it in evidence? Mm -hmm. Okay, any objection to 1905? Um, with the um, comments, I, we have no objection to the photograph itself. We would ask the comments be redacted as hearsay. Well, I'd like to at least question the witness about the comments. I have no objection to the photograph being published. Okay, well, let, then let's, let's wait, wait a minute. Mr. Depp, you see here, this, these are four pictures of you, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And, yes. and below it, it they indicate that they were taken on July 24th, 2015 in Bangkok, Thailand, correct? Objection, lack of foundation, calls for speculation. Overruled. In Bangkok, Thailand, so before the train ride. Correct, before the train ride, because you yeah. didn't get on the train ride till the 25th, is that right? I, 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 somewhere in that area, I guess. Okay. Your Honor, I'd ask for uh, permission to publish this to the jury. All right. Did, uh, did, with, if it's just the photographs, we have no objection. All right, if you want to redact the, um, just have the photographs in it? Sure. So we'll do 1905. Oh, yeah, 1905, but just with redaction, sure. it'll be fine. Some on the bottom. I'm just, Let's just redact that. Thank you, Michelle. All right, publish. Thank you, Your Honor. Michelle, could you please um, scroll down to the bottom two pictures there? Mr. Depp, in these pictures that were taken before you got on the train ride for your honeymoon, where you claim that Miss Heard hit you and gave you a black eye, you have the exact same shadow or sunburn or mark under your left eye. The exact uh, same mark, don't you? That's the, um, when you get a side light, you see the occipital mm -hmm. bone. So that is the exact area. Yep. And it's actually. A side you, light will cause that. 
Yeah, as well, the well. picture's not being taken from the side, is it? It's being taken no, no, head no, no, on, no, no, isn't no, it? No, no, no. The lens in front, yeah. the light on the side, right. will cause that occipital bone, I believe it's called, mm -hmm. to, to appear sunken. And Just like lights on the side of a train car, correct? Objection well, calls for speculation. You can take that down, Michelle. That was, in fact, in the dark. I had a chef. I had people on either side of me, so I don't see where the light fill is from the side there. Mr. Deputy, you can wait for the next question. Next question. Next question. Sorry. Even the picture your team chose to show you on that train isn't accurate, is it? Let's pull up Objection exhibit, calls for speculation. Let, let's pull up exhibit 1859, please. 1859. Is that in evidence? Yes, no, Your Honor. Mr. Depp, this is the, this is the same picture or the same, um, the exact same scene displayed in PX 162 that you looked at this morning, correct? That looks like my face has been, the eyes have been photoshopped. Oh, okay. By, so this, this, or, this post from the Eastern and Oriental Express's Facebook page, you're saying that that's photoshopped? Is Let's that from their page? I would, sure, why wouldn't they? Let's pull them up side by side, please. Your Honor, I move for the admission of uh, this exhibit. We can just, just have the pictures. We don't need the... Any objection to the picture? Uh, objection, lack of foundation, lack of authentication. <laughs> is that you in the photo, Mr. Depp? It is me, but it's clearly... Your Honor, it's been, I, I move it's to strike been... anything after that, first okay. of all. Okay. Um, and... Uh, would ask for admission of this photograph. All right, just a photograph? Yep. Are you gonna... We maintain our lack of authentication, lack of foundation. All right, over objection on 1859. In Thank you, Your Honor. Michelle, could I please get you to... You need to redact it first. It, we actually have, have one um, it's, uh, that will admit or ask to be admitted as 1858. Uh, that is just the picture. I already have it. Okay, so we'll call this 1859 then. So this is 1859. Yeah, we just need to. Okay. We'll fix that exhibit sticker on the bottom and get you that correct 1859. 1859. And Michelle, what I'd like to ask you to do, please, is to, to put the picture displayed as 1859, just was admitted into evidence, next to PX162 that was shown to Mr. Depp this morning. You can pop those, they're both in evidence. Can you try to make them the same size, please? This is the exact same picture, isn't it, Mr. Depp? With radically different quality. And... No, you answer my question. Permission how do you published? know I wasn't done? Answering. You answered my question, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. Mr. Depp, you had that, whatever mark it is, whether it's a sunburn, whether it's a shadow, whether it's the light reflecting, you had that same mark on your eye before you got on that train. Well, it's pretty difficult to get a sunburn on a train. Um, but, and let's in the photographs with the child, I don't look particularly sunburned. Can we see those again? Let's, let's uh, pull up exhibit uh, one. Actually, no, let's, let's talk about Australia for a little bit. Oh, good. You testified that you've never done ecstasy more than a handful of times in your life, correct? Six, seven times. Now, you heard Miss Hurd's testimony. You've been sitting here. I know you didn't look at her, but you heard her testimony. And oh, you, heard, you her. heard her. You, you didn't hear her say you ingested eight to ten all at once. She said she came down after being apart from you for some time, and there were eight to ten gone from the bag. Objection correct? form compound. Overruled. I also heard Ms. Hurd say I reached yep. into a bag and threw the, and poured a bunch of yep. MDMA down my mouth. C correct, correct, um, that's right. She didn't handful. say you poured 10 at one time, did she? No, she said a handful, okay. which is more than 10, I believe. Okay, the fact is, Mr. Depp, you are asking for ecstasy. You who have only done it six times in your life, you are asking, asking for ecstasy and cocaine within minutes of being admitted to the hospital after suffering your finger injury, weren't you? Objection compound. I don't recall oh, that I was okay. begging for up, any drugs. Yeah, let's pull up a, a plaintiff's or exhibit 393, please. 
You just said you don't recall you were begging for any drugs? No, I don't, that, but I do okay. recall being in great pain and great distress, so... Okay. I could have asked for a teddy bear as well. Okay. So this has been, this has been admitted, Your Honor. This is in evidence, okay, yeah. and published. And if you can blow up the text, please, Michelle. In this text message, Mr. Depp, you are, after you suffered your finger injury, you just testified you don't recall asking for any drugs, you're, you're texting Nathan Holmes, your personal assistant, need more whitey stuff ASAP, brother man, and the e-business. Now, we went over this in your cross-examination, didn't we? Uh, if you say so, sir. And, you, and whitey stuff is cocaine. I would say. And the e-business is ecstasy. Um, you yeah, testified? quite likely, yes. Okay. So I, take I, I didn't recall that. Thank you. But, um, Can you pull up exhibit 1817, please? This is um, a picture that you were showed, shown this morning, Mr. Depp. Yes. And you kind of made some illustrations on the picture and, and gave your account of what you see here. Mr. Depp, you testified previously that the vodka bottle that you allege cut off your finger was a handle of vodka, correct? Um, yes. You've already testified the to that. The second correct? bottle, there was a handle on it. Bob. Right. Yes. This bottle, whatever it is, to the extent it's glass at all, that's in the corner of this room, that's not a handle of vodka. Objection calls for speculation. Um, I think oh, you'll find that I said two bottles. Mm -hmm. Well, before. actually, what, what you testified to this morning, Mr. Depp, was that the bottle in the corner was the handle. And there is no other no, bottle no. in the picture, is there? No, that's not what I testified. I testified that, may I touch the screen? Yes. This. Glass. This is glass. Yeah. And that's okay. not a handle. Neither of those are handles of vodka. Well, it's that big. It's broken. The handles up the top yeah. on those vodka bottles, mm -hmm. sir. Yeah. I and, mean And none if you if you combine all that glass on the floor, that doesn't make up the amount of glass in a handle of vodka. Does it? Objection calls for speculation. I, I'm, I'm not a, you know. It, it, uh, there's objection. Hold on. I, uh, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. There is no picture of a handle of vodka broken on that floor. Is there, Mr. Depp? I, no, I don't see it. I see glass under this chair here. Okay. Well, you testified uh, this morning that you did see it, so it's good to get that clarification. Let's move no, on. I didn't say I saw a handle. Um, you also testified this morning <laughs> that you... you yeah, and I want to get this, I want to make sure that we're, we're on the same page here. You testified we earlier this morning that there was no phone in the bar area downstairs. Is that what you testified to? Uh, I don't recall a phone in the bar area. Okay. I don't recall, I, I don't recall a Bakelite phone in the bar area where I... Okay. No. Let's, let's pull up, um, Michelle, please, the UK Day 3, page 421. Mr. Depp, we've, <laughs> we've, we've done this drill before. This is your testimony from the UK, correct? Can I please have? It's this. We don't have copies for everyone. It's on the screen. Your Honor, right there. may I please? I would like to have what he is the testimony of the witness. Here, you can have my copy. Mr. Depp, you remember giving testimony in the UK trial for several days, correct? Okay, so yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So and I do yeah. remember a telephone in the bar area, and this yeah, well, I, I'm, you picked up the, was made the, of bakelite. This is my turn to do this, Mr. Depp. I'm sorry. On page 421, line 19, you were asked a question, and this telephone that you picked up was made of, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go go up one, line 15. Question, at one stage when you were in the kitchen, screaming at Ms. Heard, you picked up a wall-mounted telephone. Do you remember a telephone in the kitchen? Answer, no ma'am, I remember a telephone in the bar area. Question, and this telephone that you picked up was made of Bakelite. Do you know what I mean by that? A retro telephone, wall-mounted but retro. Answer, it was a wall-mounted telephone, but it was not Bakelite. It was a modern phone. It was plastic. Question. A phone that was a wall-mounted phone that was picked up. Can you scroll down, please? Qu 
Question, a phone that was a wall-mounted phone that was picked up by you, held in your right hand, and you were repeatedly smashing it against the wall in your right hand. Answer, that is possible. But I do not, if that is the case, I do not believe I spent very much time on the phone. I remember ripping the phone off the wall. That was your testimony, correct? It seems it would be yes. Thank you. I... You answer my question. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Depp, you've, you've claimed before... You've said, if I'm angry and I've got to lash out or hit somebody, I'm going to do it. And I don't care what the repercussions are. Anger doesn't pay rent. It's got to go. It's got to be evicted. You've said that before, haven't you? Have you a quote from me somewhere saying that? It's my question to you. You've said that before, haven't you? Well, actually, let's refresh your recollection. Can you pull up um, exactly. the Ghost in the Machine article, please? Possibly about paparazzis. <laughs> Mr. Depp, you see the picture of you um, on the lower left. You yes. appears to be shirtless and wearing a crown, uh, I believe. The, you see the long paragraph above that that starts with, In the Mark Hotel? Ah, yes, you yes. See that? yes at, at the bottom of that, um, does this refresh your recollection that you said, I have a lot of love inside me and a lot of anger inside me as well. If I love somebody, then I'm going to love them. If I'm angry and I've got to lash out or hit somebody, I'm going to do it. And I don't care what the repercussions are. Anger doesn't pay rent. It's got to go. It's got to be evicted. Did I read that right? You did read that right, yes. Thank you. You can take that down, Michelle, please. Now, Mr. Depp, you've also claimed that um, you've said before that if, if you want to be with a woman sexually, that she is rightfully yours, haven't you? Could you repeat that? And you've also said that with Could respect, you repeat that, please? Yeah, that, that if you want to be with a woman sexually, that she is rightfully yours yours. That's ludicrous. You've also said that with respect to women that you want to be with, you've remarked, I need, I want, I take, haven't you? Equally as ludicrous, no. Right. Can you pull up DX 883, please? You can pull it what you like. I've never said those words. Okay. There's not enough hubris in me to say eight, anything eight, like eight, that. 883? 883, Your Honor. It's not, is it empty? It is not admitted yet. Okay, 883. Mr. Depp, these are text messages from you to Stephen Duders on February 22nd, 2017, correct? Um. This... No, this looks nothing like me. You might have mistaken. Uh... Mr. Depp, we can show the full unredacted. You've looked at a number of text messages in this case, and the words him as the identifier, that's you, correct? In every text message we've seen in this case. Yeah, uh, yeah sure. It yeah. still doesn't mean it hasn't been screwed with. That's not anything that I've ever said or written. You want to see the whole the whole thing unredacted? We can look at that, too. No, it's because you could have typed it up last night. No. Yeah. I can assure you I didn't type it up last night, Mr. Depp. Your Honor, I'd move for the admission of Exhibit 883. All right. Any objection? Uh, objection on relevance grounds, Your Honor. All right. Do you want to approach for a moment? Yes. Let's take a look.
right. 883 in evidence as redacted. Thank you. Mr. Depp, are, you're aware that these are text messages. You, you can see the bottom right where it says Depp and then it has a number, 8129. Those are produced by you in this litigation. You understand that, right? I understand that. Okay. All right. Michelle, could you please let's take a look at the top text first. Mr. Depp, on February 22nd, 2017, you texted Mr. Duders, right, exactly, Molly's pussy is rightfully mine. Should I not just bust in and remove its hinges tonight? Did I read that right? You read it right. And the one beneath that, you say, I want to change her understanding of what it is like to be thrashed about like a pleading mackerel. And then in all caps, you write, I need, I want, I take. Did I read that right? You read it right. Said I did not write that. Okay. Perhaps someone else. You wrote every other phone. text that you produced that came from you in this litigation, didn't you? Not necessarily. Sometimes okay. you give your people, your phone to people, and they text Now, when you strong. got off that plane Excuse me? Um, from Boston, I'm sorry. So when you got off the plane from Boston, you, you, you knew Miss Heard was angry with you, didn't you? It was pretty much a given. Objection, okay. calls for speculation. And you understood her to be angry, right? She was always angry, yes. And you asked Mr. Duders, same person, you can take this down, Michelle, please, thank you. Same person that you texted in that last exhibit. You asked Mr. Duders to communicate with her on your behalf, correct? Um, I don't know what you're talking about. You'll have to explain. You asked Mr. Duders to communicate with Ms. Hurd by text to speak to her about the incident, correct? About what incident? To speak to her about the plane flight. The Didn't plane you? plane? The Boston plane. The Boston plane. Yeah. So you're saying that I uh, influenced Mr. Duders. I told him that he had to write this and I had to, told him that he had to write that. Is that what you're saying? No, no. It wasn't uncommon for Mr. Duders to text, to, to communicate with Ms. Hurd on your behalf, correct? Objection calls for speculation. Um, it, oh. He was your personal assistant. Mr. Duders was your personal assistant, correct? I had two personal assistants um, right. at the time. He was one of them, right? Yeah, Mr. Duders was one of them, yes, sir. Right, and, and it wasn't uncommon for you to ask Mr. Duders to communicate with Ms. Hurd on your behalf, correct? Um, it wasn't uncommon for any of them to communicate uh, with Ms. Hurd on my behalf if I were on set or, or, or unavailable or any or, of that. Or if, or if Ms. Hurd were, and you had had a fight, you would sometimes have them to communicate with Ms. Hurd on your behalf, correct? I think my crew caught on very quickly that just a, just a yes or would no, be Depp. necessary for them to... No, just a yes or no. It was not uncommon Objection, after you and Ms. Hurd had... I'd ask that he be allowed to finish his answer. Yes or no question, Your Honor. All right. Could I ask your question again? Thank you, Your Honor. It wasn't uncommon for you to have one of your personal assistants communicate with Ms. Hurd after you and her had a fight. I disagree because you're insinuating that I had them do it, and you don't know that. After the Boston plane flight, you had Mr. Duders communicate with Ms. Hurd, correct? When I'm asked what to do, I said placate or just placate her like we always do. And and you you told him, send her whatever message you need to send to placate I'm sorry, her, he's sorry, he feels bad, yes, because any other answer, you know, uh, uh, it would turn into World War III. Okay. Can you pull up Exhibit 229, please? Your Honor, I think you know where I'm going here, and based on Mr. Depp's testimony, I'd ask me for the admission of Exhibit 229. Your Honor, I'd, can we please approach? Sure. Mr. Depp, you 
you were pretty angry after Miss Heard got her temporary restraining order, weren't you? Angry. I was, more than anything, I was hurt. Okay. And you, you testified earlier this morning, you claimed that you, you somehow were responsible for her getting the role uh, with Warner Brothers, correct? That's what you testified to this morning. You also, you also tried to get her fired from Aquaman, didn't you? Um, After the temporary restraining order. Which question would you like me to handle first? Sir? One question, sir. You tried to get her fired from the Aquaman after the temporary restraining order, didn't you? Um, well, what is related to the story about me getting it just, her... Yes, yes or no, Mr. Depp. I, I don't... It, so I didn't ask what, what related down to what yes or no at all to. times. I, I can't please you with a yes or a no every single it's time. A, it's a yes or no question, Mr. Depp. You tried to get Ms. Heard fired, didn't you? Answer's no. All right. Let's pull up um, Exhibit 821. Is that Mr. me Depp, trying is to this, get her fired? This is, a, this is a text message that you had with your sister, Chrissy Dembrowski. She was the first witness in this case, right? She doesn't work at Warner Brothers. She you can't fire Amber. Yeah. This is a text message you had with her on June 4th, 2016, isn't it? Uh, June 4th, yes. Your Honor, uh, move for the admission of Exhibit 821 as redacted. Any objection? We would object on relevance grounds, Your Honor. Okay, I'll overrule that objection. 821 in evidence. <clears throat> and on June 4th, 2016, Mr. Depp, you texted your sister, I want her replaced on that WB film. Did I read that right? You did. Her is referring to Amber, right? That's correct. And WB is Warner Brothers, correct? Again, correct, yes. And then after you sent this text to your sister, following the temporary restraining order, you reached out to Guy Silverstein to have him fire Amber, correct? Who? Uh, uh, it's Greg Silverstein, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I don't recall reaching out to Greg Silverstein. You reached out to Sue Crawl to get him to fire Ms. Heard, um, right? I had vetted Ms. Heard. And uh, I, I, I had vetted Ms. Heard. Mr. Depp, you got your chance Warner to speak Brothers this morning. Had, Your Honor, I, I, Warner Brothers had two friends. Mr. Depp, if you could just answer the question, sir. All right, next question. You reached out to Greg Silverstein to get him to, to try to get Amber fired from Aquaman, didn't you? Asked I and reached. Answered. Excuse me? Asked and answered. It's a yes or no question that he hasn't answered, yes or no. All right. Yes or no, sir. You reached out to Greg Silverstein to try to get Amber fired from Aquaman. Second half of your question is wrong, sir. You reached, I reached out to, out Sue to them because I vetted her. No, 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 M Mr. Depp. You reached out to Sue well, Kroll to like get her to, to to try to get her to uh, help you get Amber fired from Aquaman, didn't you? No. And you reached out to Kevin Sujahara to try to get him to help you get Amber fired from Aquaman, didn't you? No. Can you pull up Exhibit 857, please? Mr. Depp, this is a text message that you sent to Christian Carino on August 15th, 2016, correct? This, this is already in evidence, correct? It, parts you know? of it are. Oh, so not this? Not this version. Well, this can't be 857, then don't. Don't. 850. Sorry. Mr. Ronberg, you can't do this to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Your Honor. Understood. Um, eight, we'll call it 857A. 857A. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you. My apologies, Your Honor. Mr. Depp, you sent this text to Christian Carino on it, uh, August 15th? I most certainly did. Okay. And in this text that you sent to Chris, you know, Christian Carino is the person who used to be Amber's agent and then was your agent for a time, correct? That is correct. And in this text, you, oh, Your Honor, permission to publish, please. Do you want to put in evidence uh, yeah, first? Yeah, move for admission of 857A. Any, any, any objection? No objection. All right, 857A, uh, as redacted, will be in evidence. 
Thank you, Your Honor. And in this text, Mr. Depp, you said, she's begging for total global humiliation. She's going to get it. I'm going to need your texts about San Francisco, brother. I'm even sorry to ask, but she sucked Mollusk's crooked dick and he gave her some shitty lawyers. I have no mercy, no fear, and not an ounce of emotion for what I once thought was love for this gold digging, low level, dime a dozen, mushy, pointless, dangling, overused, flappy fish market. I'm so fucking happy she wants to go to fight this out. She will hit the wall hard, and I cannot wait to have this waste of a cum guzzler out of my life. I met a fucking sublime little Russian here, which made me realize the time I blew on that 50 cent stripper. I wouldn't touch her with a goddamn glove. I can only hope that karma kicks in and takes the gift of breath from her. Sorry, man, but now I will stop at nothing. Let's see if Mollusk has a pair. Come see me face to face. I'll show him things he's never seen before, like the other side of his dick when I slice it off. Did I read that right? You did. Now, not long after this, you can take that down, Michelle, thank you. Not long after this, you, you met Mr. Waldman in the late summer or fall of 2016, correct? I believe, yeah, September, October, somewhere in there, whatever. And he's been your attorney <coughs> since then, correct? Yes, sir. And you met with him with the Daily Mail in London in February 2020, didn't you? I'm sorry, again? You and Mr. Waldman together met with the Daily Mail in London in February 2020, didn't you? Um, are you asking me a question about my attorney and I? Yeah, that you two met with people from the Daily Mail in London in February 2020. Was that during the London trial? No. No? No. Dur in February. I don't recall it, though. Okay. I, I don't. If, to the extent Mr. Waldman testified that you did, you, you don't dispute that, correct? I, I just don't I, don't. I don't recall it. Okay. You don't disagree with Mr. Waldman's testimony that you and he met with people from the Daily Mail in London in February 2020, correct? If that's Mr. Waldman's testimony, then... Okay. But I, I just didn't necessarily know who these people were. Right. The, the, I guess. the same month that the Daily Mail released alleged tapes between you and Amber. Objection correct? calls for speculation. Alleged, lack of personal yeah. knowledge. Alleged I'll, sustain, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Now, Mr. Depp... You, you testified, and I wrote it down before lunch, you said, when Ms. Myers asked you something about, you know, how does it feel to make you, or how, how does it feel to be here? You said, I've been living with it for six years and waiting to be able to get the truth out. You remember saying that? Yes. You also said, I've spoken up for what I've been carrying on my back. Something to that effect. You remember saying that? Yes. And you've claimed several times in this proceeding, Mr. Depp, that this trial is your first chance to tell your story, haven't you? Yes, sir. But that's just not true, is it, Mr. Depp? That's not that's true. That's... No, for me it is true. Okay. Well, it, it, here's the thing. You, you... The fact is, Mr. Depp, when Dan Wooten wrote an article that was published in The Sun calling you a wife beater... Mm -hmm. You brought a lawsuit against the son in June of 2018, correct? Yes, sir. And that was, that was six months before Miss Heard ever wrote her op-ed, correct? I don't know. And in the summer of 2020, there was a several-week trial in London against the son, correct? Miss Heard was not a party to that trial. She not my question, Mr. Depp. In the article that the son wrote that you sued over, you sued for Mr. Wooten calling you a wife beater, correct? Objection asked and answered. Sustained. Next question. And in the trial that you subsequently brought, you called a lot of witnesses, right? I don't know what a lot is. I, I don't know. Many people testified on both sides of the trial, correct? Yes, many people. And many exhibits were introduced, correct? Correct. Like a trial, yes. 
And you, just like in this trial, you were on the stand for several days in that trial, correct? Yes, sir, I was. And that trial involved the same factual issues that you are litigating here, which is whether objection, you committed domestic abuse illegal. against Amber Heard. Sustain the objection. Next question. You brought that case against the son because you were angry at the son for calling you a wife beater, correct? Y y yeah, that's and you probably through, a pretty good reason. And you yeah. went through that trial in London, correct? I did indeed, yes. Mr. Depp, you've already had a chance to tell your story, haven't you? No, Objection there were lim answered. great limitations right. in the UK oh, trial. Okay. No further questions. All right, redirect. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Depp, um, Mr. Rottenborn asked you some questions about um, the UK trial. Why do you feel that this is the first time that you've actually had an opportunity to tell your story and, as you said, get off, get the load off your back? As, as the UK trial um, was uh, me suing Dan Wooten and the son for defamation for calling me um, <coughs> a wife beater, um, the UK have different, well, there are different laws, there are different ways they handle things, there are also limitations in uh, uh, evidence. Um, some things can be brought up, some things Question cannot be Honor, brought up, Mr. Rodmore. He's talking about limitations in evidence in the English. Your Honor, he's talking about his experience yeah, uh, testifying. Oh, overruled. You'll be okay. Um, yes, the, 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 the there is a very, um, everything is quite boxed in with regard to, with regard to what can be said, what can be spoken about. So, uh, Ms. Heard provided information to the son um, as their star witness, but the case was not brought against Ms. Heard, it was brought against the son newspaper, journal, whatever it is. Uh, Mr. Rottenborn referenced that you were on the stand for multiple days. Four and a half, I believe, yes. Yeah. What was the nature of that examination? Or, excuse me, who was conducting that examination of you? Um, uh, QC Sasha Wass. And whose attorney was that? The son. Can we please pull up DX 857A? All right, it's already in evidence, so we can publish it. Mr. Depp, do you recall seeing this text message when Mr. Rottenborn was questioning you? Oh, yes, I do. Can you explain what you're conveying to Mr. Carino in this text message? I'm in, I'm in total shock that this is happening to me, that my entire life on the planet has been uh, brought to the, the head of a pin with all this um, completely, utterly false information. So I am, yeah, when you're accused of horrific acts and things that you have not done, when it's actually some very uh, ugly things that are going out there into the world about you on a nonstop basis, by Ms. Hurd and her team, you have a tendency as humans to get very, very irate and angry, not to the point where you go out and hurt someone, not to the point even where you assault a cabinet. But 
you do get irate. You do wonder why this person is doing this to me. So yeah, many things go through your head. Um, and then you've got your family, you've got your kids, you've got your parents. Your, my mom, thankfully, didn't get to read any of this because that would kill her. But my father, my, my family, my, everyone that I've met, the people that have supported me, suddenly I'm scum. Why? Never had to happen. One little lie. So yes, very angry. Could we please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 821? <clears throat> Mr. Depp, do you recall seeing this text message um, when Mr. Rottenborn was asking you questions? Yes, he loves this one, yes. Yes. Would you care to explain what you're trying to convey in this text message? Um, well, Warner Brothers was about to find, they were about to find themselves in quite a dilemma as the person that they had just cast. Objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation as to what Warner Brothers knew or thought. Didn't I meet with them? All right. If you could just wait uh, for the question. Uh, I'll sustain the objection to the next okay. question. Um, Mr. Depp, without explaining what Warner Brothers felt, why did you send this text message to your sister? And what were, excuse me, strike that. What were you trying to convey to your sister when you sent this text message? Honestly, I felt responsibility for having gone to those people and, 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 you know, uh, uh, painted such a beautiful picture. Objection. Hearsay, Your Honor. Now he's talking about what he said to Warner Brothers. Uh, over, overruled. Please continue. You change seats. Hmm? So, sorry, you can continue. Um, I, I felt it was my responsibility to get the truth to Warner Brothers about they were going to, what they were going to end up facing down the line, which is two franchises um, uh, that would be, would be causing problems for one another, especially as um, all the, any, any news, any press, any media that came out about me at that time had been turned into, you know, I was Charles Manson, you know, I was, the worst thing on on earth, and they just kept coming. It was like a it was like a nonstop fire. So, my responsibility, after having painted a beautiful picture of her for them, was to tell them. Um, I uh, I think you better. Jackson, your honor. He's getting into what he claims he told Warner Brothers or wanted to. He's. He's saying what he, he wanted to tell them. He's not saying what he actually told them. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Mr. Depp, you mentioned two franchise films with Warner Brothers. What two franchise films are you referring to? Um, there was Aquanet, I mean, <laughs> Aquaman, sorry. Aquaman and Fan, Fantastic Beasts, uh, the one that I was uh, in. And why did you feel a responsibility with respect to those two franchise films? Um, Warner Brothers was starting to get quite upset about uh, some of the things that were being said about me in the press that were constant, constant, constant uh, hit pieces. Um, and, uh, you, you know, it, on one level, on, on one level, yes, it's just acting, it's just movies, but it's business and it's your word, and I had given my word to them, and I had to, I felt responsible in, 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 to be, that I had to tell them exactly what was going on, and uh, that it was gonna end up ugly. And which of those two film franchises were you a part of? I'm sorry? 
Which of those two film franchises were you a part of? Um, I, I was, uh, I was, I was in the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and I was in um, the Fantastic Beasts: The Crimes of Grindelwald. Could we please pull up DX883? Now, Mr. Depp, do you recall seeing these text messages during Mr. Ronborn's examination? Oh, God, yeah. Yes, I remember. And you didn't seem to recall these text messages. Is that fair? It, 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 it truly is fair. It's, I mean, it's not, I'm not. Do you have any? Those. I don't know who Molly is. I don't know any, I don't know nothing about this. Do you have any understanding of what you're referring to in this text message? Or these two text messages? No. I, 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 honestly, if, if, if somebody else had borrowed my phone or something and made this text to Stephen, possibly. But I don't understand the... I don't, I don't have that kind of, uh, I don't write like, I don't have that kind of hubris or uh, expectation. That's quite grotesque text. Can we take that down, please? Can we please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 1821? Mr. Depp, do you recognize this document? That is behind the bar, yes. Okay. And do you see a... Mr. Ronborn asked you some questions about whether there was a telephone yes, in, and in now Australia. Yes, and I see a telephone there now. Yes. And do you, do, did you recall really that do. telephone being there? I don't recall the telephone being there, but uh, I, I can see it now. Can we please pull up eight, uh, Defendant's Exhibit 1820? Do you recall me showing you this text message earlier on? Uh, or excuse me, do you recall yes, me showing you this picture yes. uh, during your examination? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. And I think I asked you whether you recall a phone being mounted on the wall in the left of this picture. Do you remember that? Yes. And what was your answer to that? No. Mr. Depp, Mr. Rottenborn asked you some questions about your, your honeymoon. Do you remember that? Yes. And I believe you had testified that you and Ms. Hurd were on the Orient Express together. That's correct, yes. Where had you been prior to being on the Orient Express? Um, we had been in um, Australia, um, and then made it over to Thailand to catch the Orient Express. Um, if we could bring up the Plaintiff's Exhibit 162 again. Mr. Depp, do you know who took this picture? Malcolm Connolly. And despite what Mr. Rottenborn in showed you about the of the picture of you prior to this, do you see a bruise on your face in this picture? Uh, I see like what looks like a pretty decent shiner and a kind of a scratched up nose, yes. And do you recall how you got the scratches and the shiner? There was a very brief um, freak out that Miss Hurd had in our cabin uh, just before this dinner. I can't remember why, but there were many. 
Um, I remember taking the photograph, though. I mean, I remember being there. I remember meeting the chef and all. But I, I mean, the quality of the photo is not great. The quality of the other photo that he showed is just pretty, prettied up. Mr. Depp, did you ever physically abuse Ms. Heard during your relationship? Never. Never. No further questions. All right, sir, so you can have a seat next to your attorneys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your next witness. Didn't quite get that, I'm sorry. Mr. Depp calls Morgan Tremaine. All right, Morgan Tremaine. Swear or affirm, testify truthfully in this case in the penalty of law. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, Mr. Tremaine. Hello. Would you please state your full name for the record? Morgan Cliff Tremaine. And what do you do for a living? Uh, I produce esports events and design video games. And in 2016, what did you do for a living? I worked as the field assignment manager at TMZ. What is TMZ? TMZ is an, enter uh, an entertainment news uh, website and television show. And what were your responsibilities as a field assignment manager for TMZ? Uh, I was the go-between the news desk in the office and the reporters in the field, which you might know as paparazzi. Approximately how many paparazzis were you in charge of? Uh, at the time, it was about 20 in LA, a handful, maybe three in New York, and then one in DC. And what were your responsibilities specifically as to the paparazzi? It would be to dispatch um, paparazzi to various locations based on tips or um, just direction um, dictated by having a list of sort of hot spots where celebrities would be. And how were those tips received? They were received either through tips that we received through our tip line or directly through um, news producers in the office. And were tips frequently received directly from sources? Um, very often the case, yeah. And who were the type of sources that TMC received tips from? Um, they would receive tips from, oftentimes it would be publicists, managers, agents, or B-list celebrities. Lawyers? And lawyers, definitely. How are tips verified? Tips are verified um, by an extensive process. If they come in through our tip line, we have to verify who sent it, that they um, that the source is truthful, and so they have to uh, add their contact information, which is a field in that um, on that website for like name, uh, phone number, things like that. And how long did that process typically take? If we receive a tip through the tip line, um, it could take a while because that would need to be, if it was a tip, we would need to verify it. If it was media, such as photos or videos, that would need to be extensively verified to ensure that the person sending it is the copyright holder and that we would have the legal ability to air it and distribute it. And while working for TMZ, were you involved in any assignments related to Ms. Heard? I was. What was the first time you recall working on an assignment related to Ms. Heard? Uh, I believe it was May 27th, 2016. And what was your role in that assignment? For that, it, Ms. Heard was filing a uh, restraining order at a courthouse in downtown Los Angeles. So um, I dispatched camera people to that location. Under what circumstances would you normally send paparazzi to a courthouse? Uh, only if we had been informed prior. It's not by any means a celebrity hotspot. 
Um, we would only ever send people there if we had been tipped off that something was occurring and there was somebody present there. And what footage was TMZ trying to capture at the LA courthouse on May 27th, 2016? We were trying to capture uh, Amber leaving the courthouse and an alleged bruise on the right side of her face. What was your team of paparazzi supposed to do while they were at the LA courthouse on May 27th, 2016? Objection, Your Honor. Uh, hearsay and foundation. What were they supposed to do? Right. She's oh. asking for, I, I, I don't think there's a foundation. I, I, I'll hearsay. overrule the objection at this point. We'll see. Go ahead, Mr. Tremaine. Can you uh, state the question again? What was your team of paparazzi supposed to do while they were at the Los Angeles courthouse on May 27th, 2016? Their objective was to capture her leaving the courthouse and then she was going to sort of stop and turn towards the camera to display the bruise on the right side of her face, the alleged bruise. Did your team of videographers get the shot of Amber Heard? We did. What is the difference between receiving a tip from a news producer than any other source? Um, if it's any other source, it would have to be verified um, by copyright. If it was anything that was received um, th directly through a news producer, then they go through that process to verify uh, the source. Did you do anything to verify the tip on May 27th, 2016 related to Amber Heard? I did not. Why not? Um, because it had come directly from a news producer. Does that mean it had been verified? It means that they had verified that tip and deemed that it was credible and therefore a camera person needed to be dispatched. After May 27, 2016, were you involved in any other assignments related to Amber Heard? Yes. Can you tell me about those assignments? Um, the next one would have been August 6th, 2016, where um, she was giving a deposition. So what did you do in relation to that tip? I uh, dispatched camera people to a parking lot adjacent to a law office in which she would be arriving to. So we could get the uh, footage of her arriving for the deposition. Do you typically send paparazzis to parking lots of law offices? No, not at all. Did you get the shot of Ms. Heard on August 6, 2016? We did. After August 6, 2016, were you involved in any other stories involving Ms. Heard? Yes, I was. And what story was that? Um, on the 12th, we received a video um, depicting um, Johnny Depp um, slamming some cabinets that was captured by Ms. Heard. And what day was that? I believe that was the t August 12th. Of 2016? Of 2016, yes. Can you describe to the jury how you received the video on August 12th, 2016? Yes, the video was sent in through our email tip line, which is uh, an email distribution that goes to all the producers and to myself as the field assignment manager because it often included celebrity locations. The It came in as, as I recall, a... Objection, a hearsay. He's just describing how it came in. He's, I think he's about to reveal hearsay, Your Honor. Uh, I'll overrule for now. We'll see where it goes. Please continue. So I received that email and it included a link from some unknown Dropbox type um, uh, public uh, website in which it contained Objection, that video. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. He's about to describe what's what comes from the Dropbox website and that's... So far as you said, he's, uh, was a link from the Dropbox. We'll see the next question. Go ahead, next question. So you received a link. What was in that link? In that link was the video of Johnny Depp smashing the cabinets. And you received this video in your inbox, correct? I did. What did you do once you received that video? Um, the, we downloaded it. We, we alerted the web editor who was sitting next to me at the time. Um, we downloaded it and then were instructed by the uh, news producer to do what we call slap um, bumpers and a bug on it, which is putting the dun 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 at the beginning end and then uh, putting a uh, translucent watermark over it, which indicates copyright ownership. After you did that, was it posted? It was posted, yes. Where was it posted? It was posted to TMZ.com. 
Did you do anything else related to Amber Heard on August 12, 2016? Um, yes, I received a tip that Amber Heard would be arriving at LAX, and so I dispatched camera people to uh, film that exit, or her, um, her arrival to LAX, rather. And why did you do that? Um, I was instructed to. How long does it take to post a story after media has been received by TMZ? After media has been received, um, it could take any length of time depending on who owns the copyright. How does TMZ obtain copyright over images and videos? Um, the only way to obtain copyright over media would be if we shot it ourselves, if it was sent to the tip line, source verified that it was from the original copyright owner, and then either purchased from that person or given to us, and then the third option would be if it was directly given to us by the copyright holder, like a direct source. And how long does it take to copyright something TMC has received through the tip line? Uh, it can take a while because you have to extensively verify that that person owns the copyright. And then possibly, it, it depends also if they, you can even get in contact with the person because they might not be super responsive immediately um, via phone or email that they provided. And then potentially you'd have to enter a negotiation with our clips and clearances department to uh, figure out the cost of that media. How long does it take for TMZ to obtain a copyright or something received directly from a source? Something in the realm of 15 minutes just to do what I described before, which is putting bumpers and a bug on something and write the article and post it. It's pretty fast. How much time had passed from the time you received the kitchen cabinet video to the time it was posted on TMZ? About 15 minutes. Did any other tabloids other than TMZ post this video? Objection no, they leading and the calls for hearsay. Did any other tabloids? Oh, 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 oh. Mr. Tremaine, go ahead. No, they did not. And why not? Um, because it was a TMZ exclusive. And what does that mean? It means the TMZ owns the copyright to it. So it can't be distributed by any other media source without backlinking to TMZ. And they wouldn't be able to upload that media without uh, getting a copyright strike. Have you seen the kitchen cabinet video that was played in this trial? I have, yes. How does that video that was played in this trial compare to the one you received on August 12, 2016? Um, when I had clicked the direct link that we received and watched the video in its entirety, it was much shorter than the video we had received uh, than the video that's been played in this trial. There was some a bit at the beginning that was played here in which Ms. Heard is um, seemingly sort of sitting at the camera and getting into position. And then there's a bit at the end where she's seemingly snickering and looks at the camera. That part was not present in what we received. Did TMZ edit the video? No, not even a little. When we receive something and it's edited, there's a clear indicator because there's a, sort of a journalistic practice that uses um, when there's an edit, you do what's called a, like a white flash transition, which covers the entire screen with white to very clearly indicate to everybody there was an edit here for time or whatever, um, just for to make it a little more compelling. But in this case, it was not edited um, as I was staring at the machine and edited it and present for the entirety of receipt to publishing. When was the next time you worked on an assignment related to Amber Heard? Um, it was, well, uh, there was the, the time where we went to the airport. And then the day after that, because um, she had flown in for the deposition, because I, I think the first time didn't work out. Um, so she was arriving again for the deposition in that same um, parking lot adjacent to a, um, a law office. And what's that, August 13th, 2016? That was August 13th, yeah. And what was your assignment on August 13th, 2016? Uh, to dispatch camera people to that parking lot at a specific time in order to film Amber Heard arriving for the deposition. How did you know that tip was legitimate? Uh, it came from a news producer. While you worked at TMZ, did you ever receive any communications from Mr. Depp or his camp? I did not. Nothing further, Your Honor. Cross-examination? Yes. Uh, so, how do you know what video was shown at this trial? Um, I was alerted by a friend that, um, that TMZ was being kind of talked about in this trial, and so I had seen a clip of that. 
So you watched some of this trial? Correct. Okay. When did you first reach out to counsel for Mr. Depp? Um, I believe that was six days ago. Whatever that date would be, I'd have to do that. All right. And then you received a subpoena, I think, yesterday in care of your attorney, Cindy Hickox, right? Correct. Okay. And Cindy Hickox represents Christy Dombrowski, Kate James, Robin Baum. Objection, Your Honor. Were you aware Calls of that? Calls for speculation. Oh, overruled. Were you aware of that? No. Okay. Now, if you don't have information that's helpful to this case, then you wouldn't be a witness, correct? Objection. Uh, Calls for speculation. No. Uh, sustained. Uh, sustained. Next question. I'm not aware. Right. Okay. You know this. You know this case is being televised, right? I, I am aware that there are cameras. And so this gets you your 15 minutes of fame. Objection, it? Your Honor. Argumentative. I, I can ask that question. Oh, ruled. Um, so I stand to gain nothing from this. I'm actually putting myself kind of in the target of TMZ, a very litigious uh, organization, and I'm not seeking any 15 minutes here. So you may, you're welcome to speculate. I could say the same thing by taking Amber Heard as a client for you. A little argumentative, don't you think? Oh, hardly. I find that to be purely logical. Thank you. Now, are you aware that Mr. Depp's attorneys were well aware of the TRO that was going to be presented on May 27th? Objection. Calls for speculation. Were you aware of that? Lack of foundation. No, overruled if you can answer it. Can you restate the question? Were you aware that Mr. Depp's divorce attorneys were aware that Amber Heard was going in to seek a TRO on May 27th? I don't think I understand the question. I don't think so, no. Okay. It's Do kind of a complicated you know question. whether Blair Burke, one of Mr. Depp's divorce attorneys, has a very close had a very close relationship with TMZ at that time? Objection calls for speculation. Overruled. If he knows. Uh, I was not aware of that. Okay. And when you said that you were dispatched twice, once to film Amber for in a parking lot for the deposition and then it didn't work out, and so you had to do it another time. How did you know it didn't work out? Because TMZ.com posted an article saying as much. Okay. And I, know, I was not dispatched. Do you know I in the why office. the deposition did not work out? I'd have to reference the article, I forget. So, so do you know... I, I didn't write that story. I wasn't involved in the actual journalism of that. Do you know which that. side... Do you know which side would have known or not known whether that deposition was going to work out? In other words, the people representing Mr. Depp or the people representing Ms. Hurd? I wouldn't know. Okay. Um, and then the video clip. Um, you don't know who provided that, correct? Correct. Okay. Not testifying to that. I have no further. All right. Redirect. Mr. Tremaine, why did you contact me <laughs> in relation to this case? Um, I saw that there was a discrepancy with like the video that was shown here in the video that I know I had received. So I, I had no interest in testifying. It was, I had reached out simply to maybe try to help with the timeline of things or, or help with the case in any way, just by virtue of, of understanding the timeline of the stories that were published and kind of how that can be unclear. Um, but I had no idea I'd be on the stand. Okay. Nothing further. Thank you. All right, sir, you're free to go. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. You have another witness? Okay. Mr. Depp calls Brian Neumeister, Your Honor. All right. Brian Neumeister. He has not been sworn. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, Mr. Neumeister. Good afternoon. Could you please state your full name for the record? It's Norbert, N-O-R-B-E-R-T, Brian, I go by Brian, B-R-Y-A-N, Neumeister, N-E-U-M-E-I-S-T-E-R. Um, could you start by describing, describing your educational background, please? My educational background, well, I graduated from Cal State University Northridge 42 years ago with a degree in political science. Um, 
From then on, I've been working professionally in photography, totally unrelated, uh, for the past 42 years. Uh, and that would also include videography, audio, and a few other different uh, binary related tasks. Where do you currently work? Uh, I own uh, USA Forensic. What is USA Forensic? USA Forensic is a digital forensics company. We are boutique, we're very small. We work, uh, we have offices in Gross Point Farms, Michigan, and in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we work with varying types of clients because to us, data is data and it takes no side. So we can be ending up working for a prosecution, defense, law enforcement, the Innocence Project. We have a contract with the Department of Defense. We do classified and unclassified work. We've done classified work with various agencies. We've worked with DOJ, and I've worked in 23 countries as a photographer. What's your title at USA Forensic? Uh, CEO. Did you also found USA Forensic? Originally, in around 1990, it was called Skymeister. And that is because of my, the amount of helicopter photography time I have. Um, about, 20, about 10 years ago, we changed it to USA Forensic while still doing a lot of the same tasks. And you described, I think, some of the entities that you work with. Um, what kind of work do you do for those entities that you mentioned? We do uh, audio forensics, which is clarifying audio, for example, sting operations or uh, audio that may have been picked up on surveillance or any other type of recording removing background sounds, video clarification. We do a lot of work with Axon Ron, cameras. I'm just going to check on relevance based on the discussion we had earlier. This experience has absolutely nothing to do with anything. All right. Do you have an objection to him being moved in as an expert in the field? Well, she hasn't moved yet. I'm objecting to the relevance of the testimony on the subject okay. matter right now. I'll overrule the objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Go ahead, Mr. Newmeister. You can continue. Uh, to where I left off is uh, we do a lot of work with Axon police cameras because they don't really handle low lux levels or low light levels very well. So we clean up, uh, we are beta testers for a program called Input Ace, which is uh, part of the Axon company used by police officers. We clarify their cameras to better see what happened at night, uh, for example, in, in different scenes. We do the same with surveillance cameras, um, any kind of camera, cell phone cameras. We also do uh, cell phone forensics, computer forensics and cell tower forensics, along with photog uh, photo photographic forensics. What types of cases do you work on? It can be anything from uh, Fortune 500s to, uh, uh, it can be anything from a pro per, which is a person that's actually just representing themselves in, in a, in a uh, smaller case, to uh, a lot of homicide cases, um, defamation, um, it could be any kind of case that requires cell phone extractions or computer extractions. It could be money laundering, could be uh, the Department of Defense identifying a voice, that type of thing. Satellite imagery, and basically anything with binary information. Have you been retained as an expert before? Oh, yes. Um, I would say we average about 150 to 200 cases a year. In the last four years, we've done over 600 cases. And that would be in uh, U.S. federal courts, U.S. district courts, various state courts throughout uh, uh, throughout the United States. We just wrapped up a case that was an overseas case wrapped up yesterday. Um, we do U.S. military court. Uh, it, we have a case coming up in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. So it, it's really very, I've done quite a few U.S. district court cases. Have you testified as an expert in digital forensics before? Yes, um, and what people sometimes don't understand is only about 2% of all cases go to trial. So 98% of the time you're actually just doing the forensic work and giving it to the parties. And as we say, data is data, it really doesn't take a side. We don't have a narrative. So uh, very often it's just providing the data for the attorneys to work with uh, or the parties. Have you ever been excluded from testifying as an expert regarding any work that you performed? No, um, but you have to take into account that sometimes there might be curbs put on what, uh, for example, in this trial, um, there's certain boundaries. Uh, or if you're working with a proper or 
with a attorney that is not very familiar with electronics. And, and the thing is, again, they teach Latin in law school, not binary. And binary is the universal language these days. So sometimes in the legal system, it's a little bit hard to explain to attorneys what exactly we're doing. So we try to break it down and make that work. What is digital forensics? Digital forensics is anything that you are using, like your, your television set, your cell phone, your computer, uh, anything that runs off of binary information that has coding in it. How long have you worked in digital forensics? Well, I actually started off in analog, so it's been 40 some odd years. I started off as a cameraman. Um, my first cameras were film cameras. When I was a kid, my dad was a director of sales and sales service administration for the NBC television network on the West Coast. So I grew up around television cameras. My first cameras were cameras people might not have heard of, Leica, Hasselblad, cameras like that. I trained with some of the best photographers around at the time, William Walner, Niall Latham, really excellent photographers. And um, I started shooting videotape from helicopters and I logged about 14,700 hours of video. And at that time, oddly enough, since we were the only helicopter, a television helicopter, we were the only helicopter in Phoenix. At the time, the Sheriff's, the sheriff's Department did not have a helicopter. The police department did not have a helicopter, nor did Aravac. So we ended up doubling up uh, being a news crew as well as an air rescue crew. So as far as forensics, analog probably from 1980 to 1990 and digital from 1990 through current. How'd you get started in it? Really by osmosis. I started in the production field. I usually don't uh, do that much TV work anymore. I did do... I did shoot uh, part of an episode, uh, a program called Planet Earth for the BBC last year. I don't normally do television anymore. It's just 99% forensics. But um, I got started because very often as working in the helicopter, um, we'd be asked to work for a police department in a rescue or a chase or whatever the situation might be. And since I'd be videotaping it, they would ask me to break it down frame by frame and analyzing it using a, what's called a time-based corrector in the day. And so um, word got out that I could do unusual things because I'm pretty good with machines. And uh, it, it just ended up, it, more and more people started calling and it just became a full-time job. Have you received any professional certifications in forensics? Yes, but again, most hackers and people who do uh, interesting work uh, don't have any certifications because the certification is usually like a week-long course. I've been doing this stuff 42 years. Um, my partner, Matt Erickson, he, uh, he's actually a... a objection, Your Honor, to the partner who's not testifying to these okay. qualifications right. on relevance. Sustained objection. Yep. Mr. Newmeister, can you just describe which professional certifications you have received? Uh, for uh, cell phones, uh, oxygen, uh, which is a, a program similar to Celebrite. Uh, but these are, uh, these are programs that are used by law enforcement and by private parties to extract data from cell phones um, that has been deleted or, uh, which is critical in a lot of cases, deleted data, or just to what we call image a cell phone. In other words, get every bit of data that's possible on a cell phone. And again, every cell phone is different. The next would be in a cell tower, a cell tower forensics. Are you a member of any professional associations in your field? Yes, um, the IEEE, which is the International Engineering Society. And the reason I belong to that is about 40% of the world's white papers on electronics are published through IEEE. So they have a huge uh, database on anything from um, microwave technology to uh, telephone transmission technology. Anything that I might work with, they might have a white paper on it. Also, uh, with the Audio Engineering Society, AES, I, uh, I'm a member of that. I lecture to AES. Um, uh, uh, there's a few others, but again, they're just uh, mainly to have a repository of information. Have you received any honors or awards? Yes, I've received about 80 honors and awards. I have, uh, for videography, I've got a total of 12 Emmy Award statues. 
but I've been the principal in 39 Emmy Awards, which means I've written the music for the uh, program, and, and the program has won the Emmy Award for music, but it was given to the production company, which happens a lot. I've won for best editing, I've won for best ace editing, which is um, computer editing, uh, best sound. I've won, uh, I've done the music to a piece that won the Gold Lion at the Cannes Film Festival. I've done uh, music to a piece that ran, that won the gold at the Calgary Film Festival. I've got a, a lot of awards from Associated Press and different uh, uh, companies from doing documentaries and news. Have you published any works um, in the field of digital forensics? Yes, uh, and they're mostly articles, about a half dozen of them or so. We don't have much time and I don't usually do it, but it was basically on most of my work deals around clarifying or authenticating. So it was basically the things I published were on clarification of digital files. Have you appeared on TV as an expert in digital forensics? Yes. Uh, where? Uh, CBS, NBC, ABC, BBC, um, Discovery Channel, a uh, number of different th things. Any uh, particular examples of things that you've spoken on TV about? Oh, Boston bombings, how the frame averaging was done on that, sort of things like that. Um, again, we get calls a lot, but I don't speak specifically about cases. I just speak about technology. Have you given any public lectures in the field of digital forensics? Yes, we get off, asked quite often, but due to our schedule, it's a little rough. We do what's called ins of court. We, do, uh, we speak in front of private investigator groups. We do attorneys continuing legal education, um, just uh, auto, audio engineering society. Just um, we try to do a few a year, and that's about what our schedules will allow, given our our, our our time. Your Honor, at this point, I'd like to tender Mr. Newmeister as an expert in the field of digital forensics. Any objection? No objection. All right, Your Honor. so moved. <clears throat> Mr. Newmeister, turning to the work you've done in this case, um, what have you done? I was asked to analyze the uh, photographs or photographs of purported injuries to Ms. Heard. And what was the purpose of that analysis? To authenticate photos or to, uh, to review and see if they were uh, altered in any way. What did you analyze to, to reach your opinions? Well, I analyzed groups of photos that were submitted by uh, Ms. Heard's legal team. What work did you do to analyze those photographs? Well, normally you start off by looking at the, what's called the EXIF data. The EXIF data is the binary data that's encoded into a photograph. It tells you, for example, um, if the flash fired, if the, what the operating software version was of the cell phone for, or camera that, that shot a photo, what type of lens was used, what the f-stop was. There's literally about a thousand lines of code in the EXIF data on a JPEG photo. So we would start with an EXIF uh, editor or an EXIF viewer. Anything else that you looked at? Yes, um, when we're dealing with RGB cameras, which are red, green, and blue channel cameras, which would be a cell phone or a, a basic home camera, they're based on RGB channels, we would do um, four, di four types of scopes. We would do a vector scope, we do, we do a luminance scope, we do a waveform scope, and then what's called an RGB parade. And those scopes analyze different things. The vector scope analyzes where the different types of colors are headed in, for example, it's broken up into reds, magenta, different areas on a, on a scope. We would, um, we would take a look at that to see if there's anything out of the normal for the type of camera being used. In other words, would there be above a certain percentage of Chroma and chroma means color saturation. Objection, Your Honor. Um, outside the scope, we, we can approach. All right, if you like. want to approach?
Mr. Neumeister, based on the um, analysis you performed in this case, uh, have you formed any opinions? Pardon? Based on the analysis you've done in this case, have you formed any opinions? Yes. What are they? Well, three basic ones. One is quite a number of the photos have been through a photo, and uh, at least one, possibly two. Objection, Your Honor. Foundation, which photos is he referring to? We have to go through this one by one. Okay. One's in evidence. Um, Mr. Newmeister, in terms of the photos um, that you looked at and that you formed opinions about, do you, un do you understand if they've been submitted as evidence in this case? Yes. Okay. And what conclusions have you formed about those? Same objection, Your Honor. That doesn't cure the issue of the objection. We have to go through this. Which photos is she talking about? Which ones in evidence? What exhibit numbers? That's that's the basis of the we're objection. We're talking generally about opinions right now, Your Honor, and we're going to get into some specifics. I think we have to go straight to the specifics. Okay. Um, Mr. Neumeister, have you prepared a demonstrative um, that aids in your testimony with respect to any of the photos that you looked at in this case? Yes. Um, I'd like to pull up plaintiff's 1303, Your Honor, if I might approach. All right. Your Honor, I would, again, object. We can approach to discuss okay, it. Tom, can we pull up um, Defendant's Exhibit 170A, which has been admitted into evidence? Mr. Neumeister, um, is this, does this photo appear to be one that you have analyzed as part of your analysis in this case? There were many versions of this photo. Um, I would say there were dozens of different versions with different chromatic values, different file sizes, different physical sizes. Some had been through Photos 1 or Photos three, which are photo editing software uh, programs. Okay. Um, Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to um, show Mr. De Mr. Neumeister's demonstrative um, plaintiff's exhibit 1303. All right, any other objection? I would object again, Your Honor, because the photograph in 170A is not in evidence. Right. Or, yeah, I mean, the photograph is in evidence. The, none of the photographs he wishes to show the jury are in evidence. 1303. Is in evidence over objection. Oh, not in evidence, I'm sorry, as a demonstrative. Just as a demonstrative. I'm sorry. Can we go to the publishing history, three, please? So. And Mr. Neumeister, um, what does this demonstrative show about um, the photos that you analyzed? Well, they, they appear to be similar. However, if you look below at the file sizes, uh, one on the left is 712 kilobytes, the one in the middle is 489 kilobytes and the one on the right is 524 kilobytes. Now what's unusual about that is these photos will not digitally fingerprint with each other. They won't hash. In other words, forensically, they don't match. But the thing is, you could say, well, it was sent through email, maybe it's a different size. This, the file sizes, for example, would be possibly, uh, you know, you can select the file size, you send a photo, but there's no way to authenticate any photo that was presented in the way the evidence was collected. And so what conclusions do you draw from that? Well, there's, this is just three of many of the same type of photos that are all different sizes and have different chromatic, which means color. Objection, Your Honor. We just had a ruling on this. All right. Sustained objection. Mr. Inuester, stick to your opinions that relate specifically to what you analyzed about the EXIF data, please. All three of these photos had to go through some type of transformation to change sizes. 
we can take that one down. Um, you mentioned um, photos 1.5 and photos 3.0 earlier, I believe. Photos. Uh, what is that? Photos 3 and photos 1.5 are editing programs that um, Macintosh or Apple put out with their product. It's for uh, editing photos. In other words, you would put a photo in and you would change the colors or you would crop it or you would clarify it by you know, enhancing, for example, the sharpening or you could darken it. Um, but when you save a photo through an editing program, you leave a mark on the EXIF data. And what is the EXIF data? The EXIF data is the data that is embedded in a photograph that tells you a lot about the photograph. And again, in the early days when we were using film cameras, you would write down the f-stop, which is the, the light setting. You would, you would write the type of lens you use, the time of day, um, the type of film stock, the type of filters you're using. Now with digital cameras, uh, that's done electronically. And there's about, about a thousand lines of code of which 50 are probably important that tell you what the camera was doing. So what's the significance of EXIF data in your photo analysis? Well, in this situation, I can see that normally where the operating system of the camera would be, which means the version that the of operating system the phone is running on, it would normally say something like, I'll just throw out an arbitrary number, 9.1.3 operating system for iOS, which is Apple's iPhone operating system. Instead of saying that, it says software photos 3.0 or photos 1.0. That means that the photo had to be rendered, which means composited together in an editing program. Did you prepare a demonstrative that shows uh, some of your analysis of some of the exit data of the photos in this case? Yes, I did. Okay. Can we pull up 1304, please? Your Honor, may I approach? You okay? Permission to publish as a demonstrative, Your Honor. Any any objection? Any objection, Mr. I'm sorry, Morgan? Your Honor. My she wishes to publish so it sorry. as a demonstrative. Um, uh, no objection as a demonstrative. All right, thank you. We'll publish it as 1304, just as a demonstrative. And Mr. Neumeister, are, are these images in this demonstrative excerpts from the report you prepared in this case? Yes, they are. And what do they show? On this particular uh, photo, and, and on all of them, it shows the first few lines of EXIF data, the ones that would be most important for this photograph. So, for example, things you would see, the very top line would be the make of a uh, phone. It's an Apple iPhone 6. And then the resolution is 72 pixels per inch, 72 to 1. Um, and instead, where it says software on a normal iPhone photo, it would, instead of saying Photos 3, it would say uh, the software version, for example, 9.3.1. And then you've got the date and the time of the photo uh, below that, which is really easy to change in an EXIF editor. And below that you have uh, things like the, exact, uh, like the flash, you've got, um, the exposure type, how long the exposure was. Uh, so what you just highlighted there again was the date and time. Uh, so that's uh, universal time code minus whatever area you're in uh, in the world. Anything else you want to show us with this demonstrative? Um, yeah, just below that, if you look, uh, there's some um, things that would say, uh, for example, a directly photographed image. That is not going to be necessarily accurate once it's been through an editor. Uh, it will always pretty much say that. Um, so when you're looking at scene, scene type or auto exposure, um, these are things that, uh, that really don't matter all that much. What would matter is, um, for example, if you're taking notes, the focal length would be important, um, the pattern of metering, things like that to a photographer would be, would be important. And again, this is just a few lines, and the reason I put these in there was just to explain a bit what 
EXIF data is. Uh, the actual thing I'm trying to point out is the fact that instead of an operating system, it shows the, um, uh, the editing program that was used on this photo. Um, are there additional photos that you did this analysis for? Yes, many. Okay. Um, can we scroll to the next page, please, Tom? Is there anything um, about this photo that you noted as part of your analysis, Mr. Neumeister? Yes, again, it's, it's uh, you know, right, right there you've got photos 3.0 on that particular photo. And I think, you know, we pretty much covered what the, what the stuff is. But again, you see the photos 3.0. And again, this could not come out of an iPhone this way. This would go into a computer, be edited, and rendered through the photo uh, editing, photo editor, and this would then be embedded in the um, EXIF data. Do you have other photos in this demonstrative? Yes. All right, can we scroll to the next page? Uh, same thing. You've got up here in the top, you've got the, uh, the photos 3.0, and this is uh, throughout a lot of the photos that are uh, in evidence or versions of the photos in evidence were gone through photos 3.0 or photos 1.5, an earlier version. Can we scroll to the next um, page, please, Tom? And what about this one? Uh, same thing, photos 3.0. And again, in a photo uh, editing app, you can do an awful lot of things. So when you see photos 3.0, first of all, you know it's not anywhere near an original. There's going to be compression artifacts because it's a JPEG file. All right. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Can we move on um, to the next page of this um, demonstrative, please? And again, same thing. Uh, you've got the photos app. Okay. And I believe there's one final photo in this um, demonstrative. What about this one? Again, if you look up there, it says uh, photos 3.0 on that particular photo. All right. We can take that one down. Um, Your Honor, I have a little bit left. I don't know if you wanted to. All right, you want to take our afternoon. Let's go ahead and take our afternoon recess. Just uh, do not discuss the case and don't do any outside research. Thank you. So let's let's come back at four o'clock. All right. Thank you.
ready for the jury? Yes, Your Honor. May we approach for just okay. one moment? Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Sorry. I'm sorry. You can be seated. Your next question. Thank you. Um, Mr. Neumeister, do you have another demonstrative prepared um, that shows a photo with EXIF data reflecting that it was saved in Photos 3? Correct. Uh, photos 3, yes. Um, Your Honor, we have a video of um, these photos, and we're happy to play it once um, so that counsel can review, if that's all right. Can we approach uh, Okay. We took care of that, Your Honor. Right, thank you. May we publish, or would you like to see it? I'd just like to see it first. Yeah. Okay. And what's what's demonstrative? Is this going to be then? This is plaintiff's thirteen oh five, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Good. 
Could you play it? There. Subject to your honor to amend the offer. All right. So 13 marked as uh, played as 1305 and used as demonstrative. You can publish to the jury. Mr. Neumeister, we're going to um, go ahead and play the demonstrative that you prepared, and then um, after the jury's had a chance to see it, if you want to explain to them um, what the demonstrative shows, that would be great. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Newmeister, what was uh, depicted in that video? The same photo treated uh, two different ways. One was marked with the original op or with the operating system from an iPhone, which is iOS 9.3.1 on that particular uh, photo. The one this is 9.3.1. There is a graphic below indicating it. The second photo uh, is marked Photos 3, and it looks quite a bit different. And um, just, Tom, could we pull up Defendant 708? Mr. Neumeister, does the image in Defendant 708 appear to be uh, similar, the same photo as uh, what was depicted in your demonstrative? It's the, it, it's the actually, it's the Photos 3.0 uh, edit version. Thank you. We can take that one down, Tom. Um, Mr. Neumeister, have you also formed an opinion about Defendant's Exhibits 712 and 713? Correct. Um, did you prepare a demonstrative that shows? Um, I can show you if you'd like, Your Honor. All right, could we pull up um, Plaintiff's Exhibit 1306, Tom? And Your Honor, this is another video that, um, oh, can you pause that, please? This is another video that we prepared. It's, it's not published yet, so I'm happy to play it once through. Um, uh, so that. Play it once through. What uh, exhibits are these that are in this video? It doesn't say. I don't okay. know. Yeah, I tried to get my question out a moment ago. Defendant 712 and 713, Your Honor. 712, 713. Okay, 1306 then will be a demonstrative identified as being published. And if we could go ahead and play that, please. Um, Tom? And Mr. Neumeister, um, what's your, um, wh what do we see here in this demonstrative? Um, there's uh, Exhibit 712, I believe you have, I'm not sure the Bates number, 712 and 713. Uh, they're two separate exhibits, except it's the exact same photograph that's been, uh, one's been edited, one hasn't, or I can't say that one hasn't, but uh, the colors have been uh, modified in an editor. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, beyond the scope of your ruling, talking about colors. 
it keeps happening. Yeah. Thank you, um, Mr. Newmeister. Um, did you form an opinion in this case about the authenticity of the photos that you review, re reviewed of Ms. Heard? Well, first of all, you can't, I can't, nobody can identify the authenticity of the photos, of any of the photos. Marked photos three, photos one, or just marked with the operating system number. And the reason is the manner of collection. So these came from an iTunes backup. Now, what is an iTunes backup? It's Jackson, not, Your Honor, I'm, I'm sorry. You're on the scope of your ruling. Exif metadata, this keeps happening. Your Honor, may I approach on this one? So, Mr. Newmeister, um, without going into the specifics, what's your opinion about the authenticity of the photos you received from Ms. Hurd? Based on the way they were collected, there would Objection, be no... Objection, Your Honor. We just ruled on this. I framed my question, I thought, Your Honor, to avoid the issue that you're concerned about. Mr. Newmeister, what's your opinion about the authenticity here? There's no way for any forensic expert to validate any of these photos. Thank you very much. No further questions. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Newmeister. Good afternoon. Um, your only degree is in political science, correct? 42 years ago, correct. And you have no degree whatsoever from any academic institution in computer science, correct? That's correct. And you have no certifications in computer forensics, correct? That's correct. From the opinions you've testified today, you relied on no data except for the embedded EXIF metadata to support those opinions, correct? Incorrect. What other data did you rely on for the opinions you've testified to today? I was trying to explain that you kept objecting. What other data did you rely on for the actual opinions you've been able to testify to today besides EXIF metadata? The type of extraction that was performed? You're asking the question for the actual that? opinions you, del you testified to. That is what I would use. I would also use vector scopes. Objection, Your Honor. That's, that was not responsive to my question, Your Honor. If you want to approach. Sir, you can answer that question. Pardon? You can answer the question. Can you restate the question? Uh, I, I don't recall a question, Your Honor. Right. We can move on. Your Honor, maybe we could have the court reporter read it back. They could redirect. Uh, no. Okay. What, what was the question, Judy? I believe the question was, what methodology did I use to make my findings? Judy's voice has changed. That's... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Is, is that correct, Judy? No, no, I was looking for the Okay. Asking for the actual opinions you testified to. That's fine. Okay. So, when you're analyzing video or photo, 
In this objection case, to video, Your Honor, that's beyond the scope. All right, if you could just answer the question, sir. When you're analyzing a photo, a digital photo, you look at the EXIF data, you use a vector scope, you can use a Pantone chart if that's available, and that should be done, but that's a whole different deal. If I go into that, you'll object to it. So you'd also use a waveform scope, you would use an RGB parade, you can use a histogram, though in this case, it's not really all that relevant. You are not offering any opinions that any photovac photograph in this case was intentionally modified by Ms. Hurd, correct? I'm just stating the fact that photographs were modified. But So you are not offering any opinion that any photograph in this case was intentionally modified by Ms. Hurd, correct? That's correct. Can you please pull up Exhibit 170A? Is that Defendant's 170? Defendant's 170, yes, Your Honor. Thank you. So you offer testimony regarding this photograph during the direct examination, right, Mr. Neumeister? There's... That, that's a yes or no, sir. Of a photograph like that, I, I don't exactly remember the uh, photograph. There's so many different versions of this photograph, but yes, I, I talked about that particular photograph. But on, uh, do you recall being deposed in this matter? Yes. And you were under oath? Yes. And that was on April 6, 2022? I believe. Can I approach your honor? Yes, sir. Thank you. So, um, Mr. Neumeister, if you could please turn to page 76. And when I say pages, those are the little pages in the four boxes, not the oh, page gotcha. at the top. And do you see page 76, line 3? You were asked on April 6, anywhere in your April 1, 2022 expert disclosure, do you offer any opinions regarding the authenticity or lack of authenticity of the specific photograph produced as ALH 7101? Response, can I refer to my report to see if that specific number is in the report? Yes. Response, not that specific photo. I just grabbed three out of the batch. Do you see that? Yes. Can you please pull up Exhibit 517, or Defendants 517? Thank you. You are not offering any opinions regarding this specific photograph, right, Mr. Neumeister? That's correct. My testimony has been limited here. And you are not offering any opinion that any photograph was visually doctored by Amber, correct? Not by, I can't put the person uh, who might have done it. Well, you're not offering an opinion that a photo was visually doctored by anybody, are you? I'd have to see each photo. There's no way to authenticate any of these photos based on what I received. So you testified about Photos 3. Do you recall that testimony? Correct. Yeah, photos 3 is a photo editing and photo sorting application, correct? It's a photo editor and photo sorter, as, as are a number of editors. So when you reference Photos 3.0, you never did any independent research. Um, strike that, Your Honor. So when the, when the software of a photograph in the EXIF metadata says Photos 3.0, that could be just saying that the photo was saved in Photos 3.0, correct? Unless you looked at a scope of the photos that would tell you that the parameters of the photo do not meet that of the cell phone that it was taken on. But the notation Photos 3.0 in the software EXIF metadata, that does not in and of itself mean that the photo was edited in Photos 3.0, correct? It means that you've recompressed the photo and it will not hash or digitally fingerprint with the original photo. But it does not mean in and of itself that it was visually edited in any way in Photos 3.0, correct? Again, it's not the same photo because you're using lossy compression once you save it. So it, you have changed the photo. So if you could please turn to page 233 of that transcript. 
and line 20, do you see question? When it says exit software, okay, Photos 3.0, onto 234. That's just saying it was saved in Photos 3.0, right? Response, saved in 3.0, that's correct. Question, that notation in and of itself does not mean that the photo was edited in 3.0, right? Answer, that's correct. Did I read that correctly? Yes. A file has not changed visually just because it has been processed through Photos 3.0, correct? That's incorrect. Uh, can you look at page 128 of your deposition, please? At the bottom, line 20, question, do you see, question, but the file changed visually just because it, is, it has been processed through Photos 3.0. Answer, you know, obviously I understand what you're asking. From a technical point, yes, because of the compression. You get down to scopes and artifacts, yes, it has changed. Was it intentionally changed? We don't know. In other words, did somebody save it in there and just save the photo? We don't know. Did I read that correctly? That's correct. But again, it says so here. Just, that was my question, Mr. Newmeister. Okay. So if the EXIF metadata software field lists the software as iOS, you have no reason to dispute that, correct? Incorrect. Well, isn't data data? That's what you testified to, right? It's very simple to modify EXIF data. It's, I mean, Did you, you find any evidence phone. in this case of actual modification of EXIF metadata? You can't, you can't authenticate any of these photos because of the way they were. That wasn't my question, Mr. Neumeister. Did you find any evidence of any modification of EXIF metadata of any photograph in this case? You didn't listen to my answer. My answer is there is no way to know because of the way the files were presented. So you felt, but you actually you found no actual evidence of it, correct? That no one could. I'm not asking way. anyone else could, Mr. Newmeister. I'm asking, did you yourself find you you found no evidence of any modification of me EXIF metadata of any photograph in this case, correct? Now I understand trying to control the narrative, but there's no way to answer that scientifically because. Given the evidence we were given, there is no way to positively or negatively answer that. It's not a question that can be answered. It, is, it is a question, Mr. Neumeister. The question is, did you yourself, you found no affirmative evidence of any modification of software exit metadata of any photograph in this case, correct? You, you found no actual evidence of that, did you? No one could tell either way because- I'm not asking about anyone else, Mr. Neumeister. I'm asking about you. Did you, you found no evidence of that, did you? Objection, Your Honor, asked and answered. He's, he's not answered what he found, Your Overruled. Honor. Overruled. There's not a way to answer that the way you're asking the question. You have to restate it in, in a, you're trying to control Your Honor, he's not responding to the question. Right, could you just answer yes or no, sir, to the question? It's not a yes or no question. Did, did you, yes or no, you found, you found no evidence of EXIF metadata modification of any photograph in this case, correct? That's incorrect. Okay. It is your opinion that the metadata of all photographs of purported injuries that Ms. Hurd has identified as her trial exhibits do not indicate that the photographs went through a photo editing application, correct? Well, uh, first of all, that's not a yes or no question because a lot of the exhibits that you have uh, um, put up, they're not photographs. They're screen grabs and they've been changed from a, a Apple format, which is JPEG, J -A JPEG, to a JPG Microsoft format. So you have actually changed the exemplars. You've changed the data yourselves. The, uh, we actually ran uh, EXIF data on some of your own examples that you've entered into evidence. They are not photos from an iPhone. Those were edited in a PC. I'm going to uh, hand up a page from your disclosure.
Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So do you see on page eight of your disclosure, Mr. Newmeister, it states, quote, the, the metadata of all of the photographs of purported injuries that Ms. Hurd has identified as her trial exhibits do not indicate that the photographs went through a photo editing application. Did I read that correct? That's correct. No but further, we're talking no further questions. Yeah, all right, redirect. Mr. Newmeister. Um, yes. A moment ago, Mr. Murphy was asking you some questions about your opinion about the trial exhibits that Ms. Hurd has offered in this matter. Um, and he asked you about your opinion that they don't indicate that they've gone through a photo editing application. What can you tell us about that? Well, first of all, on this last exhibit, it says metadata, not EXIF data. So that's two different things altogether. We're talking EXIF data, and on the report, I put metadata because I was requested to cover meta and EXIF data. So it's taken out of context. The EXIF data is the data based that's embedded in the photo. Metadata can be the file data about the file itself, two different things. So the way the data was collected, it was an iTunes backup is a backup. Objection, Your Honor. Backups outside the scope of Your Honor's ruling Thank beyond you. EXIF metadata. I think you opened the door on the, the uh, overruled objection. objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Go ahead, Brian. An iTunes backup is only a backup of things that are on an iPhone that have not been deleted. It does not have the critical operating system. It doesn't have any of the files that would validate the path of a photograph in that phone. It does not have a lot of the log files. It does not have the Knowledge C database, which talks about usage of the phone and uh, the patterns of how data was handled. All it is is the photos you dec decided to save not the photos you deleted. So it's a very limited database. Without the system registry or without the system operating system, there's no way to tell because it's very easy to modify a, a photo on a phone and have it just read iOS 9.3.1. But with the actual phone, if you were able to get a hold of the actual phone, and in 95% of all cases we work, we have the actual phone, it doesn't matter if the the phones are 10 years old or 20 years old, or I mean, not 20 years old, but 10 years old. The reason is if people have something they want to keep as evidence, they don't throw out their phones. They don't recycle their phones. They save their phones. So people ask how we're doing phones on 13 year old cases because people do not throw out evidence. They keep the phone. So in a situation like this, there are no forensic extractions in fact, the extractions we were provided were backups of backups of iTunes uh, just exports. So it's third generation, and there is no way to verify the file paths and the history of any single photo that we've looked at. No further questions, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, sir. You can have a seat in the courtroom, or you're free to go. Thank you very much. All right. Your next witness. We call Morgan, excuse me, Beverly Leonard by video link. I need the TV. All right, just give us a moment to okay. get the TV up. 